Hi, I'm Penelope, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. For starters, your songwriting, your storytelling is like, you make it seem easy. You make it seem <laughs> like you're just a natural at giving your listeners like these stories. And on top of it, you make it easy to understand the stories. Thank I feel you. like that's something that's difficult to kind of nail when you're creating music. How did you discover how to write these stories? I mean, I think a lot of it came from the music I listened to when I was younger and, and listening to good storytellers. I think a lot of the music that spoke to me had really strong lyricism. So, you know, growing up, I listened to a lot of, with my parents, a lot of like Fleetwood Mac and Joni Mitchell and Stevie Wonder and people who were just good storytellers. And then I started listening to Taylor Swift and I love everything about the way she tells stories. So I was definitely inspired from that. And I think as I kind of came into my own and started writing my own lyrics. I wanted to kind of emulate those people and, and was listening to people like Phoebe Bridgers and Julian Baker, as well as I entered college who told stories or, or put songs in a way that it wasn't like, okay, verse, pre, chorus, whatever. It was kind of like, just say what's on your mind and tell your story and think of a good melody and have it be specific enough to be your personal story, but also wide reaching enough to be relatable. So I just kind of tried to do that. On top of that, like your wordplay is also another thing. Like I feel <laughs> like that that's another challenge in itself. Like, do you do research before you write music? Like <laughs> how do you balance these not two? Not really. I think it's, it's also like I, I studied history and English in school. And so I had to write a lot of essays. I had to read poetry. I had to read um, old English texts and, and stuff like that, where it was like an act through an academic lens and was always kind of using that tool of writing and arguing and all of that and trying to be witty about it. Um, so it probably comes from that too. <laughs> so as you, as you jump into Drive, the new single, Mm -hmm. um, what was that creative process for that song in particular? And, you know, how much of, of this, um, like, learning that, that we kind of just talked about came into play with the song? Yeah, Drive is a really funny one because I didn't even sit down that day to write a song. Like, I, I was, it was my senior year of college, and I was actually randomly taking guitar lessons as a um, class at school. It was like, and I could take that for credit. I don't know, I got lucky. And, um, and I, part of that was like soloing. And so I was learning how to like, how to, you know, you play two chords, you put yourself in a key and then you just play the scale and, and solo over it. And so I was, I'd just gotten a loop pedal from Guitar Center and I was just strumming along soloing. And then I was like, you know what, this is actually a really cool, track like this could be really cool and I just looped it and I added more guitars and kind of created this guitar instrumental track and then I put some words to it like I, I literally was like okay this first line of I'm running from the love I hope to find sounds really cool and then I just went with it so it was kind of the creative process it kind of flowed out of me in a very cliche way to say that but um it kind of just came out without me really trying to sit down and be like okay I want to create this song today about this thing and what was that moment that you kind of realized that this was like a song that not only you wrote but you were planning on releasing as a single not into I mean I wrote it and I made it a little like garage band track or logic track to it and then it was only um like a few months later when I took it to my um, producers, Naz Tokyo and Eric Zane, and I, I, I sent them a recording of it and they were like, I love this song. And then we really sat down in the studio and just wrote the other instrumental parts to it that really brought it to life and made it this cinematic kind of piece. Um, and that's when I was like, this is, this is cool. This is, <laughs> this is gonna be cool. <laughs> The entire song, it just kind of keeps me in 
that space of like I feel like I'm in the car with you as I'm like <laughs> you know as we're talking about the video also but like one of the cool things about the song and towards the end of it you had these kind of like chant like style background vocals yeah and it, it just gave me that feeling like um no pun intended but like I'm coming home like I, I, I'm like I'm reaching the destination that I'm yeah. trying to get to like it was yeah. such a cool vibe but um what was the idea behind th that little like chance I don't even know what to call that section yeah I guess the chant section is like a good way to say it I I mean we were in the studio and Eric was like I have this idea for this this it has to end we we're, where are we going right where is it gonna culminate what's the, the climax of it um and he had this idea and he had recorded himself doing it and I was like this is sick and so then Naz jumped behind the booth recorded her yeah yeah yes then I did and we just layered it all um and I think that it's supposed to be exactly kind of what you felt it to be which is you know you're reaching that that point you're like driving in the car either like you're body is like coming out of the um the rooftop of the car right and you're just like throwing your arms behind it um and you're kind of reaching that like peak glide I always feel or like you're really you've really hit the high point yeah of the drive how would you say like these producers kind of challenged you uh whether it was vocally or whether it was like I don't know if you also play the instruments on on this um song yeah. But like, how do so you feel they challenge you? Actually, all the guitars in it are from my original So demo. that's still the that's demo. Everything. So it's still that wow. like, boom, 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 right? That's all the original guitars from the demo. And then we, we tracked some more guitar over it and um, obviously added more instruments. Um, but yeah, I think, I think a lot of, I, I felt fortunate with Eric and Naz that like a lot of our session was making the song not not trying to change its original dna just trying to like enhance the experience of it um and i think they did an amazing job doing that and, and eric is is a wizard with everything he does so i felt grateful for that and aside from like you mentioned earlier that this song kind of just happened for you um how different was the process for this song whether it was in the studio or even in the singing compared to coming home it was definitely different. I think coming home, I sat down with a guitar and I kind of figured out the chords I wanted and I, I started writing and it was a very acoustic, acoustically driven song. Um, whereas Drive started on electric guitar and kind of was always going to be this beast of a track. Um, so definitely a different process, but I think both came from the initial moment of me just sitting down and thinking through my emotions finally and writing out what I had processed from the experiences that I ended up writing about. Right. And the fact that, you know, the first one was more acoustic, this one was more electric, like regardless of which song it was, you don't drown out your vocals, which is something that I feel like is also complicated. Like you're, you're giving us this like raw emotion, but sometimes the music kind of takes over it. So we don't, actually feel your expressions or your, your feelings what we do on these tracks like is that something that you kind of had in mind um as you were recording the song or did you kind of trial and error before you kind of finalized uh, the song no definitely i mean i for me i if i could just play all my songs me and a guitar i would it wouldn't be that entertaining and i probably wouldn't get on the radio or anything but i think my hero is always the song that i've written and that rawness and emotion of both the way it's delivered and the way it's written. And I never want to try and, and I never want production to come in and, and push that to the side um, or, or take over the show. So in any project that I work on, I always say that up front and, and with that in mind, then we don't add too much, too much noise to it. We only add things that we know are going to, make it better and now with with these few releases that you have out so far like is this going to be a body of work like what are your plans on yeah uh, i'm on so i'm hoping in 2021 to really put together an ep and release that i think it's been my dream for a while to really put something out there that says like this is who i am in a body of work here are four or five tracks that you can listen to and it gives you each one gives you a different 
feel, but it'll give you a piece of me. And, and so that's definitely what I'm looking forward to in 2021. And what's the relationship that you have right now with Madden? Because I, I noticed that Madden with Madden. Does, with Madden, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Joel is a really good friend of my family. He's like an uncle to me. He's like a That's he's kind nice. of like a fairy godfather. Um, and he actually, when I was in college, I was writing and and I was an athlete in college, so I didn't even think about pursuing music. Wow. And I started, I stopped playing soccer and I, I moved into like this space of like, what am I going to do now? I just dedicated 18 years of my life to the sport. Like, what do I do? And I had written a bunch of music and played it for my friends. And they were like, I want to listen to this when I run or when I am sad or when That's I cool. am, you know, studying. And I was like, okay, but I don't want to send you this voice memo. Cause like you can hear my roommate, like, printer her printer going off in it so um I want to record it at a studio and so knowing Joel I called him up and he was like yeah just come to MDDN and we have like an in-house producer named Courtney Ballard and um you can work with him and so I went there and Courtney and I met and Courtney's an amazing guy and I played him some of my stuff and he was like this is really great and he gets Joel he's like Joel come back in here Joel listened and he was like Penel I didn't even know this is what you were holding from me, like you were withholding, like, why didn't you tell me? And I was like, I don't don't know. I just kind of like wrote these things. And he was like, you're crazy. Let's like, like make these songs and and I want to help you. And so he's kind of always been there looking out for me and Catch Me When I Fall, the first song I put out was that song that we recorded that day. So, um, and it's been my most successful song ever. So it's, it's a cute little story and I'm so grateful to MDDN and everything that they've, they've constantly just given me so much advice and support and I'm so grateful. That's amazing. Yeah. That's really amazing. Like, and it's cool. I love that you, it's not something that sticks out like, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, related to such and such. Like, yeah. I love that you're still pursuing your music naturally. Um, and it's like, obviously it speaks volume. So like, that's cool. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad <laughs> that you've liked it and that's been able to reach you and, and do things for you. I think that's always been the goal for my music is I wanted to write things that like helped people process the emotions that they weren't able to articulate because mm. that's, you know, by sharing a story that I have, if that can help someone feel like, oh, wow, that's so crazy. Like, this is exactly what I feel. Um, that's something I like loved about Taylor Swift when I was in like middle school being like, Oh my God, this is exactly how I feel about my middle school crush, you know? Um, (laughs) And it made me feel less alone. And I think that's the best part of music. That's the power of music. It makes you feel like you're not alone. Right. Right. Well, thank you for being you and thank you for creating and uh, (laughs) thank you for, you know, giving us the experience to kind of leave this crazy world for a second and just kind of join yours for a bit. I know it's, uh, it's weird. I don't know. I feel like 2020 has been such a just mind and then still seeing people create beautiful things and being able to put stuff out there is is really warming so i'm trying to do that too yeah (laughs) awesome don't (laughs) stop don't stop